Hi everyone, here today to continue the Suit of Cups videos. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Three of Cups, right here. Uh, Three of Cups is, <laughs> is an oddly intimidating card, I find, just because of what our man Alistair writes about it. Um, and I would like to read to you some of the stuff from the book, just to remind us what he writes. Uh, he basically, I'll paraphrase, basically he says, uh, card refers to Bina in, in water, uh, and is a card representing Persephone or Demeter. Uh, cups are pomegranates, which is important. And then he says, they are filled bountifully to overflowing from a single lotus arising from the dark calm sea characteristic of Bina. Uh, there is here the fulfillment of the will of love in abounding joy. It is the spiritual basis of fertility. Now that first paragraph is very interesting, I think, because if you really read between the lines there, um, the card really is not much different, based on that paragraph, from the Three of Wands. You know, the Three of Wands is, is of course, a card of tremendous fertility. And if you read what he says about the Three of Wands, he says, you know, it's a lot more simple, his explanation for this card, but it represents uh, the will being transmitted to the mother who conceives, prepares, and gives birth to its manifestation. Now, here... This card basically represents the Three of Cups, the exact same thing uh, in terms of fertility and the mother being impregnated by um, the divine will. The card is referred to the influence of Mercury in Cancer. This carries further the above thesis. Mercury is the will or word of the All-Father. Here its influence descends upon the most receptive of the signs. And so here we get more uh, a, a more watery interpretation of basically the exact same idea that was in the Three of Wands. Uh, the Three of Wands is the sun in Aries, and he talks about, I mean, all of those ideas are related to spring, conception, birth, fertility, um, gestation, all of those things, uh, and, and birth are, are big uh, ideas contained in the Three of Wands. Now, the Three of Cups, is, he is saying, is essentially structurally the exact same thing, um, which is which is interesting. Uh, the other thing too that I find interesting is his emphasis on the fact that um, all the cups are filled from essentially one lotus, and I believe the lotus he's talking about is right here on the bottom, which sort of feeds or gives off lotuses that fill all the other cups. Now, for me. The way I interpret this is is because, you know, if we continue talking about the theme of the cup suit as being about union and bringing things into, into union and the pleasure and joy, the energy that is released as a result passively. Um, so that sort of clues us in that the card has to do about has something to do with uh, unity and uh, how all derivatives of pleasure come from essentially one source. And that one source is, is the idea of Bina, really, this world soul, this overall vessel for life that Bina represents. Um, and I think, you know, it, well... He goes on uh, to say, at the same time, the combination of these forms of energy brings in the possibility of somewhat mysterious ideas. Bina, the great sea, is the moon in one aspect, but Saturn in another. And Mercury, besides being the word or will, is the guide of the souls of the dead, or the psychopomp. Uh, the pomegranate was the fruit which Persephone ate, uh, thereby enabling Pluto to hold her in the underworld. Um... The lesson seems to be that the good things of life, although enjoyed, should be distrusted. So, again, this is a very interesting thing. I think, uh, here we go. Hello, this is Joe. Um, I think that what he's getting at here is that Bina, you know, naturally has this dualistic quality, not only because um, she is the feminine and, and the feminine is represented as dualistic, hello, um, but... Also, she represents the moon and Saturn. And so she develops, she has these sort of, no, you don't need to be part of the video. Uh, <laughs> this is what I, what I go through. Uh, 
What do you want? She has uh, the tendency to be both lunar, which is mysterious and um, illusionary, I guess, and also Saturn, which is much more restrictive and realistic and harsh, I guess. Um, so she's two very different things uh, contained in one singular idea, okay? Um, and I think essentially what he's getting at um, I, I, I think that's why he is legitimizing this idea of connecting the card with the myth of Persephone and how Persephone was sort of seduced into staying in the underworld via the pomegranate uh, and how um, pleasure is sort of a seductive thing and is, is illusionary to some extent. That all pleasure is essentially a reflection of one real pleasure, one true pleasure that has to do with union with the divine, uh, which which is what brings Mercury into this idea. You know, Mercury being that which sort of, the force that descends into the underworld in order to redeem souls and bring them back into the light of God, or whatever you want to say. Um, that, I think, you know, is, is what he's getting at. That that is, you know, the true happiness, and any other forms of happiness um, that we may experience in physical life are not necessarily to be trusted because they are imperfect reflections of that one true happiness which we should be focusing on, if that makes sense. So it's, it's a complicated card. There's a kind of a lot going on here, um, but I, I believe that that's what he is getting at. And I think the cool thing about seeing it in relationship with the Three of Wands is to really see how similar, in some ways, the Wands and the Cup suit are. And I think, you know, especially that high up on the Tree of Life, they really are supposed to be seen that way because they are opposites of each other. Um, and I think the more similarity we can find between them, the more the closer we can come to understanding that very confusing but important relationship between the Yod of Tetragrammaton and the He of Tetragrammaton, the He Primal, um, or the relationship between the God and the Goddess. You know, it's really interesting philosophical stuff. So, um, in terms of divination, when I get the Three of Cups in a reading, it can tend to represent either one or two things. Uh, it tends to represent... Uh, very generally, pleasure, and any kind of pleasure, uh, anything that you encounter that, um, that uh, represents the, f the, the manifestation of pleasure for you. Uh, unlike the Two of Cups, which is more the will to pleasure, the, w the desire for pleasure, and the attraction between, um, between basically, uh, the, the, the lover and the beloved, you know, that's sort of what the difference is. Uh, in the two, there's that magnetism, and in the three, there is the actual coming together and manifestation of, of those forces. And in doing that, we create this abundance of happiness and joy, uh, and also, basically, through the union of opposites, basically, um, through this fertilization we create joy. And so, uh, again, you know, in, in life, there are many things that can give us joy that are representative of this union, but the, the real source of joy is not necessarily in the things themselves, as I think what we're getting at here. Um, so it can either represent that very generally. It can also represent reunion. Uh, if, if, you know, your querent has recently sort of rehooked up with some people, you know, friends, family, whatever, um, that's what the Three of Cups can also represent. You know, I, I tend to think of Demeter waiting for Persephone to come back to her uh, with with this card, so sometimes it can represent that sort of reunion, um, a coming home kind of, of, of sense. Uh, it, it can also represent uh, the formation of a relationship, either friend or uh, romantic, uh, otherwise, or, you know, um, that sort of thing. It can also represent just social gatherings. Uh, it's, it's a very vague card, and it really depends on context, like a lot of the water cards, uh, like all the cards in general, but particularly the water cards because they're so impressionable. Um, you know, it can represent social gatherings, parties, weddings, 
any kind of get together, really, uh, any any situation in which people are coming together and having a good time, can be represented by the Three of Cups, uh, and that's I, I believe that's that's about it. That those are really all the definitions that I tend to think of, and of course it depends on context. It really does. Um, you know that Mercury influence is very interesting in that card, um, but when you read the text closely, it makes sense. Um, so. All right, I hope this helps, and uh, more to come tomorrow. We'll do the four tomorrow, obviously. All right, hope you're still enjoying these videos. Hope they're still making sense and all that, and helping y'all out. All right, bye.